share with you today how to get to the other side of a test. Now, you might have already noticed if you've been paying attention that this letter that he shares is to <coughs> Jewish Thanks. believers uh, who have been dispersed, who have been scattered about uh, the land. They were being persecuted. Uh, these, 12, these Jewish believers of 12 tribes. And as a result of the profession of their faith, uh, some of whom were struggling with what was going on in their lives, much like many of us today oftentimes have to struggle in what we go through and what we deal with. And I listen to what James is sharing here. And he says in this 19th verse, he says, So then, my beloved brother, and whenever you see him and he shares and he says, So then, it, it prompts us to look back in the scriptures, Brother Donnell, to what has been said in the previous verses. It, it just calls us to reflect in our minds and in our hearts and see what God was sharing earlier and how what he says next actually fits in to what he said earlier. And so he prompts us to look at verse 18 the preceding verse in which he said this, of his own will he brought us forth by the word of truth that we might be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. The optimal word there is that he brought us forth by the word of truth. And in all that they were going through in all of their struggles, uh, D, uh, he, 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 he says to them that, that they'll, they'll be delivered. They will be brought out by the word of truth. Yes, I, and, and if you really look at these verses that we have just read in your hearing today, uh, there is this thematic expression that is sitting around the word. Yes, uh, if you look at uh, verse 21, he, he talks about uh, those that, and receive with meekness the implanted word. Yes, uh, which is able to save your soul. Yes, if you look at verse 22, he says that we ought be doers of the word. Yes, uh, my brothers and sisters. Uh, and he goes on in verse 23 and he tells us uh, the consequences uh, of anyone uh, who is a hearer of the word and not a doer. Yes. Uh, and then in verse 25, uh, he reflects and he talks about uh, that individual who looks into the perfect law of liberty, which is another way of expressing the idea of the word. Yes, uh, my brothers and sisters, uh, what God is trying to get across here is that there is something uh, about his word. Yes, yes uh, if I could just trek back in time uh, and hear from the prophet Isaiah in that 40th chapter when he makes his transition to the second part of the book. He said, the voice uh, said, cry out. And he said, what shall I cry? All flesh is grass. And all its loveliness is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades, because the breath of the Lord blows upon it. Surely the people are grass. Then he expresses to us the climax of this 
passage when he says the grass withers, the flower fades, uh, but the word of our God stands forever. Yes, my brothers and sisters, uh, I, I have come to discover over my short sojourn on planet Earth, my brothers and sisters, that the word is the bridge that crosses us over. Yes, uh, I, I've been here for over half a century now, uh, and, and I've come to learn uh, over the years, uh, yes, uh, that, that it's the word that will bring us through. It's the word that will hold us. It's the word that will rock us to sleep at night. Uh, yes, uh, it's the word that will be our company keeper. Uh, yes, uh, Sister Tiffany, it's the word of God uh, that will uphold us and strengthen us. Us, uh, in our time of weaknesses. Uh, yes, my brothers and sisters, uh, yes, today God is simply trying uh, to get across over into our minds uh, that we must, uh, yes, embrace uh, his word. Mm. Yes. Yes. So much and so that he shares with us this. He gives us three principles here in this text to live by. But before he shares with us those three principles, uh, he says it this way. He says, let every man be. Yes. Uh, and, and when he shares those words, uh, let every man be, uh, it's in the imperative. Yes, uh, and, and the significance of it being uh, in the imperative uh, is that whenever something is shared in the imperative, uh, it's not a suggestion. Yes, uh, but it's a command. Yes, uh, and so what he is about to share next uh, is, is a command, it's a directive. Uh, yes, uh, if, if you want what God got for you, if you want to get out what you in, uh, if you want to make it over your, your, your mountains, uh, if you want to make it through your valleys, uh, he says you ought to pay close attention to what I say next. Yes. And I was looking at, I was looking at what he shared here and and as and as I was looking at what he shares here, uh, it, it really caught my attention because for 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 a long while as I kept looking at it, I kept I kept asking the Lord, why are you sharing this with this group of people who are who are going through suffering in their lives, who are dealing with anxiety, who dealing with ups and downs and tribulations and problems. Why are you telling this group of people these words? Mm -hmm. he, he says, he says in verse 19, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to read. And, and as I'm looking at this, and I look at what he says is the solution to our dilemma. He says the word is the solution to our dilemma. And sometimes, my brothers and sisters, you, you may have noticed it in your own life. Or perhaps you have, may have noticed it in the environment around you. The people at work. Uh, the people in your neighborhood. Uh, yes, uh, you, you'll discover that. When you're going through something, uh, yes, sometimes uh, we, we, we get to a place where we lash out. Yes, uh, when, when you're going through something, when, when, when as the songwriter said, trouble in my way. Yes, uh, and we feel like we've got to cry sometimes. Yes, uh, we'll sometimes speak out of turn. Yes, uh, sometimes we'll say some stuff that we'll later regret. Sometimes we'll say some stuff that we'll later have to take back. Sometimes we'll say some stuff that will get us in trouble. Yes. And so the more that I listen to the Spirit of the Lord as he speaks out of this text, uh, I, 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 I began to understand exactly why it is that he shared with us these principles that he shared with us. And the first thing he says, my brothers and sisters, in terms of how to get to the other side of our text, is to be swift to hear. 
And I know that some of you have heard somebody say, or oh, we ourselves may have said, I hear you. But sometimes we use that expression for alternative means and reasons. Sometimes we use that expression as another way of saying, get out of my ear. Sometimes we use that as a way of saying, you ought to shut up and sit down. <laughs> yes, it's another variation of saying, could you hush up, please? And, and so we'll try to be polite as we can. And, and we'll say, uh-huh, I, I hear you. Yeah, yeah, uh-huh, I, I, I hear you. But, but, but Jesus uh, want us to catch this today. God is trying to impact our lives and our perspective on how it is we can make it in our lives to the other side of our test. Sometimes our test is, is like a river. Sometimes our test is like a mountain we're trying to get over. Sometimes our test is like a valley that's deep and wide that, that, that we're trying to, to, to tunnel through. And God says, if you want to get to the other side of your test, yes. he says, you ought to be swift to hear. Yes. Mm. The, the picture points to listening to the word of truth that was expressed earlier in verse 18. It, 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 it's a picture that's aimed against the violent and disputatious speech that we sometimes would share. It, 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 it counters uh, the confrontational attitude that we sometimes have. Sometimes we refer to it this way. When somebody, you know, uh, uh, early in the morning and we just got to work, we haven't even had our second cup of coffee yet, and they're already irritable, and we'll say, well, you must have got up on the wrong side of bed this morning. Because yeah, sometimes uh, the pressures of life will, will cause us to get that way. Sometimes the pressures of life will cause us to become confrontational and irritable in our life. And so he tells us that he gives us this portrait that, that we ought to be swift to hear. We ought to go counter to our culture. We ought to go counter to our personality. We ought to go against the trend and the norms of life that would ultimately push us to a place where we would just become confrontational with folk. They may not even be the source of our contention. They may not be the one who got on our nerve. They may not be the one who issued us the pink slip. They may not be the one who bumped into our car. But, but because we are irritated, because we are going through what we are going through, we just become confrontational with somebody. We just got to let somebody hear what's on our mind. Yes. And so he says, my brothers and sisters, if you want to get to the other side of a test, be swift to hear. Yes. <laughs> Listen to what he says in verse 21. Therefore, lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness and receive with meekness the implanted word, which is able to save your soul. Reason why he shares with us that it's important that we be swift to hear is because what God has to say is just that important. Those of you who can reach back in your minds to the 70s will remember that old commercial that would share these words. It would say, when E.F. Hutton speaks, yes. everybody listens. Well, my brothers and sisters, 
I want to tell you there's somebody who's far greater than the air yes. and who have the words of eternal life. Yes. yes, that's what James says right here, which is able to save your soul. Yes. He says, in other words, those of the diaspora, those who were, were scattered and spread out across the land, who were running for dear life because of their faith, he was saying to them that you ought to hear the word of the Lord because God can save your soul. God has something for you that man can't take away. God has something that he can deposit into your life that you don't have to be afraid, you don't have to fear, you don't have to worry. Yes, you can go on about your business. Can I get a witness right there? Yes, if you would just simply receive with meekness the implanted Word of God. Yes. There's something about us. Sometimes we mistake meekness for weakness, but really what meekness is, meekness is power that is under control. Yes. yes. And so, in other words, no matter how gifted you are, no matter how talented I may think that I am, God is saying that we ought to put all of that under wraps. Yes, no, no, no matter how smart you are, no matter what school you graduated from, or whether or not you grew up, you know, uh, from the school of hard knocks, and you had to get it earnest. Uh, yes, uh, my brothers and sisters, God says you can set all of that aside. Uh, yes, put that under control, and, and I want you to step to me with a sense of meekness, uh, Yes, and hear the word of the Lord. Yes. yes, because there is coming a day when, yes, the flower will fade and the grass itself will wither. But I want you to understand this, that the word of the Lord will stand forever. Yes, yes. and so when you're facing what you're facing, when you're going through what you're going through, uh, Yes, you stand tall like a soldier and know that God's got you. Amen. Yes. Hearing goes on to the extent of affecting our actions and our behavior. It's more than just simply selling somebody to just to get them out of our face. I hear you. <laughs> no, he says, hearing extends to our behavior and to our actions. <coughs> and then he says this. Let me see if I can rush on here. And he, he says, I, I want you to be, I want you to be swift to hear. Yes. And, and, and I, 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 like, I like to think that God has a sense of humor. He gives us two ears. And one mile. Now, God, as infinitely wise as He is, and as powerful as He is, yes. He can do all things, including allowing us to have one portal to hear from. Yes. And we can still get and hear everything that he has to say and those around us would share with us at the same time. But some reason or another, God decided that he would implant on our bodies two ears, one on each side of our head. Can I get a witness? Yes. And so he says, I, I want you to be, I, I want you to be swift to hear but I want you to be slow to speak. Yes. The direct antithesis of the first. In, in one occasion, he tells us that we ought to move with rapid speed and agility. And then he turns around on the second point, the next note, and he tells us that we ought to move with a, a snail-like pace. He, he said, he says, when it comes to hearing 
what God is trying to speak into your life, you ought to be anxious to the extent of rushing to the feet of Jesus. Uh, just as Mary and Martha would hear the words of Christ as he was there sharing in their home. Yes. He says, you ought to be swift. But then, when on the other hand, the flip side of that, when it comes to speaking, he says, if you want to make the best of your circumstances, you ought to hold up for a minute, and you ought to slow down. Uh, as the young folk used to say some years ago, you ought to slow your roll. Yes. When it comes to speaking. Yes. Yes, yes, Brother Mike. Yes, God says... Uh, that, that we ought to be slow to speak. Yes. Uh, when we are slow to speak, it helps us to avoid self-deceit. Yes. Uh, can you catch this? Yes. Uh, look at what he says here in the text in verse 22. He says, he says, uh, he says, but be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. Yes. God says that when we when we are when we are, 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 are swift to hear and slow to speak, it helps us to avoid the trap of self-deceit. Mm -hmm. We can we can ultimately deceive ourselves into believing whatever it is we want to believe. Uh, that, that's why used car salesmen tend to talk real fast. Uh, they, they, want, they, want you to, they want you to just grab what they want you to grab and they want you to miss what they want you to miss. They, they, don't, they don't want you to pay too much attention to the, to, to the scratch on the, on the passenger side. They don't want you to pay too much attention, uh, yes, uh, to, to, to the transmission that is slowly shifting into gear. They don't want you to pay too much attention to, to, to certain things, but, but, but they want you to pay a whole lot of attention, uh, yes, uh, to, the, to the spark or the glimmer, the shine uh, in this place or another. That's why they sometimes refer to salesmen as fast talkers and smooth talkers. Uh, yes, uh, they, they, they're, they're trying to speak loudly and fast. They're trying to elevate their voices. They're trying to move, uh, yes, with a swift-like speed. Uh, yes, so they can get you, uh, yeah, to sign uh, on the dotted line. Uh, they're trying to get you to sit in the driver's seat uh, and to take the vehicle off the lot. Uh, yes, uh, because they don't want you. Hmm. Well. Yes, uh, to see everything well. that's going on with that used vehicle. Yes, and that's just another way of saying they trying to deceive. Yes. And God says that we ought to avoid self-deceit. Um, and, and when we don't hear what God is speaking to our lives and placing that into action, we're deceiving ourselves. That there, 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 there are a number of individuals who will say, I love the Lord, I love Jesus, uh, yes. Uh, but they refuse to hear what Jesus has to say. Yes. Jesus says, if you love me, somebody been reading the Bible. Yes, uh, keep my commandments. Yes, uh, and, and so my brothers and sisters, uh, it's an oxymoron uh, if we would suggest uh, that we are that much in love with the Savior, the creator of heaven and earth, uh, and at the same time uh, be confrontational and indignant uh, when it comes uh, to the word of the Lord. Mm. Yes. yes uh, it, it's impossible to be uh, a follower of Christ, uh, but at the same time 
shame uh, be offended uh, by Christ. That's why Jesus was provoked to the extent that he asked his disciples this question when there were those who had walked away from him when he began to speak about uh, lest you eat of my flesh and drink of my blood. And there were those who thought he was speaking in cannibalistic ways that he was talking about literally eating his flesh and drinking his blood and they got offended and they walked away. And he looked at his disciples who were standing there and he asked them this pertinent question. He said, will you two go away? And it was Peter who stood up like a Trojan and he uttered this response and he said, to where shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. That's a turning point in the life of Peter, but that's also a turning point in my life and in your life. When we come to the place in our life where we recognize, realize uh, that God actually has the words of eternal life. When the words that God has for us uh, can actually impact and make a difference in our lives. It can change our destiny. Uh, it can change our tomorrow. It can change our dreams, our hopes, uh, and the fulfillment thereof. Yes. So he says, I want you to be careful. Mm. Um, he, says, he says, I want you to be careful because not only can you deceive yourself if you are not doers of the word, but if you jump down to verse 26, he says that if you don't hold your tongue, you can also deceive yourself as well. Yes. He says, if anyone among you thinks he is religious. And I've been, I've been, I've been sharing that God has no issue with religion. There are a lot of folks who are taking odds with the word religion. God doesn't really take odds with the word religion, but what God does take odds with is impure religion. Mm -hmm. Religion that is not based on Christ and Christianity, that he takes odds with. And so he said, he says, uh, if, if, if anyone among you thinks he is religious and does not ride on his tongue, he deceives his own heart. Yes. He says this individual's religion is actually useless. That's when God takes offense on religion is when religion becomes useless. Mm -hmm. When it becomes useless and in vain. When it's void of the truth. When it's void of Jesus Christ as being the center and the circumference of it all then he takes issue with religion. Yes. But he says, I, I want you to understand, pure and undefiled religion before God and the Father is this. He says, why don't you go out, put your words into action, visit the orphans and the widows in their trouble. He says, that, that's when you find out what your religion is made of when you go and you help somebody else who's worse off than you. Now, I already shared with you that he's writing to those who are dispersed, those who are scattered because they are being persecuted before, because of their faith. And he says the answer to getting over your trouble is to help somebody else. Because no matter how bad off we may think we are, there is always somebody who's going through something a little bit more worse off than you. Yes. He says, he says, he says, and not only that, he says, and to keep oneself unspotted or unblemished from the world. The world has a way of getting on you. The world is like the beat in your neighbor's car that's playing loudly out of the windows and you drive off. And when you drive off, all of a sudden you're still mumbling the words 
of the song that you heard at the light. You're still bobbing to the beat that you heard while sitting there at the stop sign. And, and that's kind of how the world is. Before you know it, all of a sudden, its ideology is sticking with you. Its terminologies and, and, and its practices and its customs uh, get a hold of us. And the next thing you know, we start talking like some other religion. You know, we start, we start using their expressions, their doctrines, their teachings, and so forth. And before you know it, we start, we start talking about our, our best us that we done picked up in yoga class. Yes. <laughs> next, next thing you know, we find, we find ourselves uh, saying, karma is something else. Yes. That's a part of a whole nother religion altogether. But we find ourselves allowing the world to rub off on us. That's what God is trying to get at when he says corrupt communication, or evil communication rather, corrupts good matters. He says that 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 a evil lifestyle, if you around it long enough, will corrupt your life. How many individuals' lives have been taken because the crowd that they hung out with, the crowd that they grew up with, they had to stop by the old neighborhood, have a beer with the fellas before going to work and wound up a statistic. No longer a part of the lifestyle, no longer a part of that stuff, but because they were hanging out with the crowd still, they were still hanging out in the old neighborhood, in the old spot, on the old corner, they found themselves becoming life's statistics. My brothers and sisters, what James tells us is that we've got to watch out because when we find ourselves going through struggles in life, sometimes we're looking for somebody to hang out with, somebody to tell our story to, somebody that we can lean on, and sometimes we'll find ourselves amongst the wrong crowd trying to get a support system. Can I get a witness? Yes. Yes. And, and, and so he says we've got to we've got to keep ourselves. Mm -hmm. He says there is this image of one man who would look at him or herself in a mirror, take a casual glance before rushing off into their day's activities. And no sooner than that individual would rush away from the mirror, they have already forgotten about the man in the mirror or the woman in the mirror. Yes. They, they, they done forgot about that hair that's out of place. They done forgot uh, about the pimple. They done forgot about whatever other blemishes they saw or imperfections. And, and they are now entrenched in that day. Yes. And he counters that image with another image of one who would instead look into the perfect law of liberty who would stare deeply into the truth of God's word. 
Go on and continue in it. Not forget what God spoke. Not releasing the promises and the principles that God has imparted into our lives. And he says, out of the two individuals and the two different perspectives, one wanders off without remembering who was in the mirror, but the other one, on the other hand, is blessed. The other one is happy. The other one experienced fulfillment in their lives. Yes. God says that if we want to make it to the other side of our test, we ought to stare deeply into the law of liberty and continue in it on our journey. God will make the difference in our life. Can I share with you before I sit down? I, 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 I want to share, share with you just a few points and then we'll be on our way. But the disadvantages that God shares with us of an uncontrolled tongue is scattered and frequent throughout Scripture. The disadvantages of not uh, being slow to speak, not bridling our tongue, not controlling our mouths, uh, are, are, are scattered throughout Scripture. Proverbs 10, 19 says it this way, in the multitude of words, sin is not lacking. But he who restrains his lips is wise. In other words, he says, if you get a person talking long enough, sin is following in their footsteps, not too far behind. But on the flip side of that, an individual who guards their words, who watches what they say, will be wise. I heard someone say down through the years, don't worry so much about who looks at you and think you're a fool or this, that, or the other. Yes. Uh, just be careful not to talk too much and confirm their suspicion. <laughs> Can I get a witness? Ecclesiastes chapter 5 verse 3 says it like this, For a dream comes through much activity, and a fool's voice is known by his many words. I'm trying to show you what God has to say about the importance of bridling our tongue. He says there are certain disadvantages of an uncontrolled tongue. It, it sometimes will make us look unwise and foolish when we talk entirely too much. But then he says, on the other hand, there are some advantages of a controlled tongue. I've shared with you that he who restrains his lips is wise. But then he also shares this in Proverbs 21 and 23. Whoever guards his mouth and tongue keeps his soul from troubles. How many individuals do you know, or perhaps it may have been you or I on some occasions where we look back in reflection and said, I wish I hadn't said that. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I like that, uh, I like that show, or that commercial rather. Uh, it's humorous in nature. Uh, when that man goes into the meeting and he tells the CEO just what was on his mind and he said that that's awful, that's ugly, that's stupid and all that kind of stuff. And then later in the commercial, shortly thereafter, you see him coming out the front doors of the building with a box in hand. <laughs> yes, uh, because it seemed like a good idea at the time to tell the boss, just what he felt, the way that he felt. 
Later, as he was walking out the front doors, not so much. Proverbs 18, 21 says it like this in terms of the advantage of a controlled tongue. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Yes. And those who love it will eat its fruit. Be careful of what we say. Psalms number 141, on the other hand, in verse 3, shares us another scenario on how to handle our tongue. If, if we are going to exercise a sense of discipline and be slow to speak, he says, set a guard, O Lord. Over my mind. He actually prays to God for assistance and submission to God's control over our tongue. He says, set a guard, O Lord, over my mouth. Is there anybody here? Yes. You know that sometimes you always say what's on your mind. Yes. <laughs> You know that you sometimes over talk. You know that sometimes stuff just slip out. Is there anybody here that would say with the psalm is Lord, set a guard. Yes. Over my mouth. Keep watch over the doors of my lips. You know, I, I've known some folk, and they, they say, they'll say, you know, girl, I just got to say what's on my mind. I just got to tell folk like it is, you know. I just got to keep it 100. I, I just got to. Yes. <laughs> Tragic is the day. of a soul who cannot keep it to themselves. <laughs> we, all, we all pray, Lord, set a guard. Lord, keep watch over my mouth. Uh, one, one, of my, one, of my, one of my mentors, uh, 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 Pastor Rice, see, uh, one, one of my mentors, his wife, had this saying. She used to say, she used to say, there are some folk who got diarrhea of the mouth. Word. <laughs> they just can't help themselves. Uh, yes, uh, they, 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 just, they just wind up just letting stuff just slip out all over the place. When, they, when in actuality they all be saying, Lord, take control. Lord, protect my mouth. Yes. And then he says this last thing as I sit down. He says, he says, he says, you, you ought to be slow to wrath. The first two principles are a setup for this last one. Say amen. 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 Uh, the, 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 the first two is is a prelude for us uh, uh, being successful in the third. He says, slow to wrath. God drops here this idea that there won't be a slowness to speak up when anger would tend to rise up. God, God knows that anger can go in multiple directions and that it can, it can have different bases for its existence. There's the righteous indignation that we oftentimes claim as the basis for our anger, but most of the times it really ain't. 
That, that's that righteous indignation that God speaks of when he says in verse uh, Ephesians 4 and 26, be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath. Yes, uh, James warns us against getting angry at God's word. There's, there's a difference between being angry over injustice, uh, but not to the extent of sin. Yes. I, look at, I look at folk who make very foolish statements across the lands over these past few years even, as they burn down cities, as they torch their own community. Now they have to go five miles to go to the store because they say that they're righteously angered at the injustice and so forth and so on. Uh, but my brothers and sisters, uh, that's not the anger that God speaks of when he says be angry. You got to apply the second part of the verse and sin not. Yes. Get angry over injustice. March. <coughs> if you will, over injustice. Uh, protest, if you will. Speak out and speak up, if you will. Uh, but sin not. Yes. Yes. Uh, and, and then he adds this, uh, which, is, which is vital, particularly in the home. Can I get a witness? Yes. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath. Don't let the day go by and still be angry. Yes, uh, he, he warns us, uh, yes, uh, 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 about uh, our anger. But then he says, uh, some folk get angry at God's word because it reveals our sin. I, I, I'll give you a moment to let that settle in. I, I know it ain't nobody in here, but it may be somebody in your neighborhood, on your block. Well. Uh, but, but sometimes when folk become aware of what it is that, that they are doing wrong, that they're going in the wrong direction, sometimes they'll take it out on other folk yeah. as if it was them who was there telling them, go down that road. Uh, try this or do that. And, and they'll blame everybody else but themselves for the mess that they found themselves in. And you're like, why, why are you lashing out in this direction? Why are you mad at those folk? Why are you, are you mad? I mean, they didn't do it. I mean, even if you have a right to be angry and somebody did you wrong, uh, it, it doesn't give you a right to just torch the whole neighborhood. Can I get a witness? Yes. I mean, CBS didn't do nothing to you. Right. <laughs> <laughs> he who has knowledge spares his words and a man of understanding is of a calm spirit. It's something about getting a good understanding when we talk too fast uh, without listening long enough. Sometimes what we miss in the process is a good understanding and that's why we have to sometimes go back and apologize. Sam, that's why we sometimes have to go back and retract and eat our words uh, because we done put our foot in our mouths yes. because we spoke before we gained a proper understanding and that's why the first two are a predecessor of this last one because when we are slow to speak and swift to hear we oftentimes in the process will gain a better understanding of our circumstances. We'll gain a better understanding of our struggles and what it is we're going through. And by the time that we get a better understanding, we realize that I can take it. We realize I can make it. Uh, we realize that I can go through this. Uh, yes, uh, God on my side. Uh, yes, I can climb this mountain uh, with God on my I can tunnel through this valley with God on my side. I can cross over this river with God on my side. Yes. 
Yes, uh, a quick-tempered man acts foolishly, and a man of wicked intentions uh, is hated uh, because he tends to act before he thinks. But Proverbs 16, 32 says, He who is slow to anger is better than the mighty, and he who rules his spirit than he who takes a sin. 14, 29 says this, He who is slow to wrath has great understanding, but he who is impulsive uh, exalts folly. Uh, Ecclesiastes 7 and 9 says it like this. Uh, Do not hasten in your spirit to be angry, uh, for anger rests in the bosom of fools. Proverbs 19 and 11 says it like this. Uh, the discretion of a man makes him slow to anger and his glory is to overlook a transgression. In other words, uh, a man or a woman uh, who stops and pauses long enough, uh, who hesitates, uh, who stalls in their tracks, uh, yes, just long enough uh, to reason, uh, to use discretion, uh, to get understanding, uh, yes, Yes, uh, will find themselves uh, being more slow uh, to get angry uh, because they stop and they think about it a while. They stop and they hear from God. Uh, they stop uh, and allow God to minister to their angry and brutal spirit. Uh, they stop long enough uh, for God uh, to quiet uh, yes, uh, their spirit. Uh, they stop long enough uh, for God to move in their life. They stopped long enough uh, for God to begin to work it out. Uh, yes, while you try to figure it out, uh, God done already worked it out. Uh, yes, the answer uh, is in the Word. God will sit down now, uh, but the answer is in the Word of God. Uh, yes, uh, I know there are some folk who are hating on the Scripture. Uh, yes, uh, but I stand by to tell you uh, that it's still uh, the number one bestseller. Uh, yes, uh, I know that there are somebody uh, who are saying, I can skip that. Uh, miss me with that. Uh, yes, uh, but I stop by to tell you that it has already sold over five million copies. Uh, yes, no other book uh, in history uh, the 